And the Bible reading this morning is from Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose stream make glad the city of God, the holy place where the most high dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Well, good morning, everybody. We live in times of constant change, don't we? We're really living in a changing world. We, um, we only have to, um, I think there's a misconception that that us, that younger people really bear the, are the forefront of change. But really, it's us oldies who really bear the brunt of change, isn't it? We see so many changes in our world. You only have to look at, um, just think about Ross's and Shirley's life in these last years where they've lost home, they've lost function, you lost vision and sight, having to deal with so many changes. But then on a more lighthearted note, there's other changes. There's all the technological changes we've dealt with. And these have happened for me in my lifetime. Do you remember my first computer? I remember my first computer at university, actually, which took up a whole room. I never actually saw the computer. I only had to fill in these little cards that I punched with a paper clip. And that sort of got fed into the computer. And so I had to speak with it in code. Now I just speak to my phone and say, Miss Google, can you tell me the way to, and she speaks back to me. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? So we some changes are good and some are not so good. So there's other changes too. So thanks, Stu. So <laughs> you can work through that list there. The next overhead. Ah, oh, the television. Do you remember the days when you didn't need a driver's license to work a television? So, and you, and, you know, we used to look at that tiny little screen at the end of the room. Now they take up a whole wall. Oh, yes, times when seat belts weren't necessary. Who remembers driving in the back of a ute? <laughs> what fun. Oh, and yes, the old bank books. Who remembers going to the bank and waiting while they wrote you wrote the resort? Ruby will probably know. Ruby worked in a bank. <laughs> so yes, and now you just go and wave your card at it over a machine. And um and people will just wave their watches at <laughs> things that constant change is here to stay. Have we got any? Oh, yes, the telephone. Who remembers going down to the local corner to make the phone call? When you were running late, you couldn't just say, where are you? I'm, I'm about 10 minutes late. I'm on my way. No. Phones that were connected to the wall and you had to stay connected to them. Phones that you couldn't see the other person. Now you could even sit, FaceTime people on the phone. Oh, the push on push mower. Who's worked one of them? Yay! <laughs> Some changes are good. I'm so glad for my Victor. <laughs> so, yeah, so there's lots and lots of changes that we've gone through. Um, our world is also a troubling world, isn't it? So a world of change and a world of trouble. 
Amy Carmichael wrote, the tests and the troubles are sometimes the unexpected things. No great things that can be written up, but the common little rubs of life, the little nothings, things you'd be ashamed of minding one scrap. You know the sorts of things I mean. I, I actually go to mow the lawn and the blessed mower will not start. I'm about to head out and, oh, I notice I've got a stain on my shirt and have to go and change it. I'm sitting next to somebody in the, in the train and the, I wish they would stop sniffing and for heaven's sake, turn that music down. It's those common little rubs of life that I'm ashamed of minding one bit. But of course, there's the bigger things. There's the much more significant troubles, the loss of a loved one, serious illness, financial pressures, worry about family, conflict and misunderstandings. Nothing seems to go according to plan. And then there's the disasters on a world scale that we're confronted with every time we turn on the television. There's, yeah, war in Ukraine. We just, we hear about the famines that are happening in Africa or it, there is just, the world is full of trouble. The psalmist is writing at a time of trouble. It's a time perhaps of upheaval and turmoil. But despite this, he is in a place of stability and safety. Are you aware of living in times of change? Are you aware of living when things can be really overwhelming? Are you aware of living in a time of trouble? Then this psalm, Psalm 46, is for you. So where does the psalmist's security and stability come from? The very first verses give us the answer. It says, God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present or well-proved help in time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains shake and in fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. What a picture! A raging storm, waves lashing at the cliffs, landslides, the whole earth seems to tremble under the ferocity of the elements. Everything that seems solid and secure in his world is falling apart. He's surrounded by forces outside his control that threaten his very existence. Yet, he's in a place of safety. He has taken refuge in God. God, who is his refuge and strength, a well-proved or ever-present help in time of trouble. My um, when I I learned this verse years ago, and um and when and in the RSV it says a well proved help in trouble, and I love that translation because it indicates to me that he's really tr he's he's gone to God for refuge before, and God has never let him down. A well proved help in trouble, one who has never let him down. But that idea of ever present gives the idea that God is always there. And it's often in times of trouble that we feel that God is somehow distant. One of, the time, one of the things of being in trouble is that sense of feeling like God is a long way away. When I pray, my prayers just stop at the ceiling. But this says, no, God is ever present. Whether I feel it or not, God is there in times of trouble. I can take refuge in him. Where do we try and find refuge when things go wrong? When you feel threatened and troubled, do you try and take refuge in withdrawal? I do that. I can withdraw from into myself so that I, I make a big wall so that I don't let people close. 
I can take refuge and withdrawal into silence. Just put up a shield so I keep you at a distance. I can take refuge in silence, just not speaking. I choose not to engage about the, in that conversation. I can take refuge in anger. Anger holds people at a distance. It stops you getting close. I can take refuge behind that wall of anger. I can take refuge in escapism, just having a good TV binge. Or um, for me, I'm more likely to have a binge. I'm, I love to have a good read. So I can take refuge in reading. Perhaps I take refuge in having a good moan to somebody. I take refuge, and this is me again, I take refuge in busyness. I take refuge in just keeping myself busy so I don't have to think about it. I don't have to feel it. I can just keep busy. I take, I keep, take refuge in that. But let's learn to run to God for refuge. We move on to part two of the psalm, um, from raging seas to a, such a contrast, we move on to a beautiful river. He says, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the most high dwells. God is within her and she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Can you picture it? A beautiful river flowing through God's holy city. I picture grassy banks and sandy beaches, just um, the sound of flowing water. Isn't that a beautiful, relaxing sound? Gentle breezes coming in off the water. A river that nourishes physically and just nourishes and makes the heart glad just to look at it. There's something about a river, isn't there, about a beautiful river. God's holy city is nourished by this river and is untouched by the turmoil of the world. God the Most High dwells there and it's the, his presence that makes is the reason why this city is safe, why it doesn't fall. At the beginning of every new day, at the break of day, God is there to help and protect his city. I love that image. At break of day, he will be there to protect it. So Tutsia said, God will help her at break of day. Outside the city, nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall, and God lifts his voice and the earth melts. The psalmist then repeats the same idea that he said in verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a well-proved help in times of trouble. But this time he strengthens it. So it's even stronger. God is now referred to as the Lord Almighty. What a title that is. This isn't just any God. This is the mighty one the high and mighty one, the God who is strong and, and safe and secure. He is the mighty, victorious God. He also refers to God as the God of Jacob. What that name would communicate to the people. This is the God who called them, the God who made them his people. The God who rescued them, who blessed them, who's made promises to them and never let them down. The God who walks with them, the God of Jacob, is their fortress. In the same way that God dwells in and protects his holy city, that holy city, God's the psalmist sees that God is dwelling with his people and protecting them. So in the same way that God was dwelling in and protecting that city, God dwells with his people and protects us. What a comfort that is. I was thinking, I was just having a, a little time with God this morning and I was thinking, um, 
Lord, thank you that you help me at break of day as I meet with you this morning. Thank you that you are here to help me at break of day. God dwells with his people to protect them. A couple of years I was starting my time with God listening to a song, one of the songs of sons of one of the songs that the sons of Korah do. And this this um this so this these verses are part of a song. I, I won't sing it to you. It's God is our refuge. No, God is a God, there is a river that shall not fail. The city of uh, there, there is a river that will not fail. City of God, the holy place. It's a beautiful song, and I would just listen to it every morning for quite a few mornings, and it just really just ministered to my soul as I thought about. Um, I was reminded that Jesus says that God dwells with me. He, God promised that God would come and dwell with us. So God dwells with me. God dwells in me. In the same way that God dwells in that city, he will help me at break of day. I'm also reminded, and Deb alluded to this too, that God's promised that one day we will live with him. We will rejoice in this holy place. And as I think of Ross and Shirley, wow, there with God in this beautiful place where there's no more sorrow, no more grief, no more suffering. Wow, this beautiful place. And we can hope. And we know that one day as we love Jesus, as we're trusting him, that one day we will go to live with him too. In, with, in, and we will see him face to face. Not just we, now, we, now we don't see him face to face. Now we know his presence with us. But one day we will see him face to face and we will live with him in eternity. What a wonderful promise that is that we have. I was going to try, we were going to listen to that song, but we can't because we couldn't get it up. So we'll just move on to the next section. And section three, so it's um, the third section of this psalm uh, moves on with an invitation. It's an invitation to come and see what the Lord has done. And then the psalmist goes on to describe God absolutely demolishing his enemies. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he's wrought in the earth. He makes wars to cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shield with fire. God will act decisively to bring judgment on his enemies. This is not a negotiation process. It's not a peacekeeping process that's going to be a negotiation this, this time will come when God will act in judgment. His voice rings out, be still and know that I am God. To his enemies, this is a cry of command, a declaration of victory and judgment. I am reminded of Jesus in the boat. He and his disciples were out on the lake and a furious storm came up on the lake jesus was asleep in the back of the boat and his disciples were so frightened that they went and shook him awake jesus you know don't you know you say we're perishing but to their amazement jesus didn't grab a bucket and start bailing water out of the boat he stood and said peace be still and immediately there was a great calm. The winds and the waves obeyed him. That's what God is going to do. God is going to say, be still. And the raging of the nations will stop. There will come a day when Jesus returns, when at the sound of his knee, his name, Every knee will bow and every tongue have to confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Be still. 
to his enemies, it's a cry of command, a demand to bow in submission. God is God and he alone will be exalted among the nations. Be still and know that I am God. To us, his beloved children, it's also a command, I think, but it's also a word of comfort to stop striving, to trust God, an invitation to rest in him, to take refuge in him. Be still. How hard it is in this world of frenetic activity and demands and noise where we're surrounded by noise and constant input. I imagine a parent with a fretful child looking into its eyes saying, be still, dear child. You're with me. You're safe. Be still. It's not easy. When I sit in the garden to try and be still, I notice the bindies. And before I know it, I'm weeding. Or, but perhaps... I can talk to even talk to God about that. Perhaps I can just involve God in, Lord, thank you for my fingers that actually can pull out weeds. Thank you for these little bendies that you've made that are so tough. Thank you. For, what are the weeds, Lord, in my life that you might want to be weeding out? Are you taking time to be still? with God regularly and to listen to God regularly. There are no hard and fast rules, but from per personal experience, I think it's good to have a regular time, a place free of distraction. And sometimes I find perhaps listening to a Christian song or something can help just to settle my heart. It's good to take some time to read a little bit of God's word to allow him to speak to you through that to spend time talking to him about what's on your heart, what's concerning you, what's going on in your life. I've mentioned it before, but I found that Lectio 365 app on the phone really invaluable for helping me to be regular, regular and part of my being still with God. Perhaps you could talk with others to get some ideas about what they do. I was thinking this morning as I was driving here and I stopped at the traffic lights and I thought... You know, like just stopping at traffic lights. I can even just say, thank you, Lord, for stopping me here. Just want to just want to just invite you into my day today. Um, thanks that you're here with me at these lights. When I'm at the doctor's surgery waiting for something, perhaps the first thing I should do is not get out my phone and finish and do my next wordle. Perhaps it would be good just to sort of say, Lord, thank you that you're here with me. Thank you that you know what's going on. Perhaps I could be just be, help me to be still and to listen to you now, to be just with you. Just grabbing those little bits of time of able to be still with God, to be listening to him through the day. It's not just a one-off thing. So in conclusion, have you seen that ad on the television? It's been on during the tennis and um, and there's a it's an ad that says, "What would you do more of if you feared less?" And um, and then it goes on to say, "There's a great insurance company that allows you not to be fearful." Well, we have something far bigger than an insurance company to take refuge in. God is our refuge and strength, a well-proved help in trouble. He is the Lord Most High, the Holy One, the Lord Almighty, the God of Jacob, our Saviour. He dwells with his people. He will accomplish his purposes and nothing, nothing can stand against him. In our troubled and ever-changing world, Let's learn to be people who take refuge in him, who learn to run to him for safety and comfort, who are learning to be still and know him. I'm just going to pray and ask God would help us to do that. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for the wonderful promises in this psalm. 
Thank you that we can be still and know that you are God. You are the almighty one, the God of Jacob. You are our God. Father, thank you for your promise that you will come and make your home with us. Lord, I pray for each of us that you would give us a, just increase our longing to know you. Pray that you would be helping us to be learning to be still and to know you better and better each day. Father, thank you that in this world of change, in this world of trouble and anxieties and stress, that we can run to you, our ever help in time of trouble, ever present help in time of trouble. Father, thank you for, yeah, thank you for that you will accomplish your purposes, that nothing can stand against you. And we just thank you in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen.